Do you love the dupe more than the original? Do you buy the original and the dupe? Do you wait for the original product to be duped and only buy that? To me, it kind of feels like all the brands are doing the same type of thing all the time now. Hi friends, I hope you're doing well. Today we're gonna to be playing with a lot of e.l.f. products. There's been quite a few viral dupes that have gone around lately that I haven't had a chance to try, so I really wanted to try them. I just saw today that e.l.f. launched their new Pout Clout Lip Plumping Pen. It's only $8. I think this is supposed to be a dupe for the viral Tarte Maracuja pen or maybe the Hourglass one, I'm not really sure. Anyway, it kind of got me thinking, like e.l.f. has always been known to bring us really high quality things at a super affordable price point, but more recently it's like back to back things are just dupes over and over and over again. I think they've done this in a more subtle way in the past, but now it's a little bit more forward and they're kind of becoming known for duping viral high-end products. One of those products initially was the e.l.f. Putty Primer, which was supposed to be a dupe for the Tasha Putty Primer that line has since expanded into this liquid poreless putty primer, which you guys know I love. And this was supposed to dupe the liquid primer from Tatcha as well. There's also the Halo Glow line, which is a nod to Charlotte Tilbury with the Halo Glow liquid filter, being a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Glow. And then the Halo Glow Beauty Wands, obviously being a dupe for Charlotte Tilbury again. So not to mention more recently, their Glow Revival Lip Oil, which is supposed to be a dupe for for the Dior lip oil. I haven't had a chance to try that. I'm really excited to today. Anyway, I'm gonna just kind of like chat with you guys while I'm applying some of my favorite e.l.f. products. So let's get into it. We're gonna use the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. I did a video where I tried this side by side with the Charlotte Tilbury one and it is indeed a dupe. I feel like e.l.f. obviously takes the cake for duping viral products really, really well, but there's a lot of other brands that are kind of doing the same thing. Part of me gets really, really excited because makeup gets really expensive, like let's be honest, especially if you're a makeup lover and especially if you like to kind of switch things up or keep up with makeup trends, it's honestly impossible to do that with all of like the viral high-end stuff. It's not realistic and I'm somebody who does this for a living and it's even hard for me to keep up. And even though I get sent a lot of product, which I'm so thankful for, I also buy a lot of product as well. And even then I feel like I can't keep up with all of these viral products on a financial level as well. So I can kind of see how dupes really are appealing because makeup is expensive. And so e.l.f. really does the most by bringing these trends to life in their own products, a lot of them being inspired by existing products. Some of these formulas I feel like do end up being a little bit different and some of them I like better than the original. This being a good example of that, the liquid poreless putty primer, I actually prefer it to my Tatcha one. The price difference is just so insane. And this honestly performs better for me. So sometimes I feel like the e.l.f. products are a little better in some ways. I went to Walmart on a hunt to find some new e.l.f. products. I was honestly hoping that they would have those new click up pens that they just launched. They didn't have them anywhere. I was also on the hunt for some lip liners, which I think they only had online. These lip liners that are on their website, I will show you guys right now, they are $2. I don't know how they accomplished that. I think they might be exclusive to their website, which might be how they've been able to keep that price so low. I do wanna try those because I'm obsessed with lip liners and I love so many drugstore lip liners. Anyway, side note, at Walmart, I found this, and I feel like this has been around maybe for a while. It had like the little new sticker above it. So who knows how new this actually is. This is their Putty Color Correcting Eye Brightener, and I got mine in the shade Fair. I don't know if this is a specific dupe for something or not. I mean, color correctors are not exclusive to one brand. A lot of people create color correcting products. Um, I've just never tried this one. I'm interested to see if it's similar at all to the Becca one that I love, or if it's a little different. So I'm gonna apply this underneath the eyes. I mean, already I'm loving what that's doing. You can see how it's kind of canceling out the discoloration. Oh, wow. Honestly, I feel like when a color corrector is good, you don't really need to use concealer, or if you do, you just need the tiniest amount. Look at the difference that that made. Is this actually new or am I just late to the game? Because this is so nice. Oh, I really like that. Also, have you noticed our lighting shift a little bit? We've been doing a lot of trial and error, like I said, with our camera. We're trying something a little bit different today and I'm hoping that it comes across as nice as it's looking in my monitor. So as always, your feedback is appreciated. I honestly feel like that's giving a very similar effect to the Becca one with it being a little bit more of that luminous finish, which I really like. 
but it doesn't feel quite as um, emollient as that one. This one has a little bit more of a grip to it. I'm excited about this. I haven't actually seen anybody talk about this. I'm sure people have. I also picked up the foundation at Walmart. This is the Flawless Satin Foundation. Now this is not a new product. I've just seen so many comments from you guys telling me to try this. And I was like, listen, if I'm gonna be talking about e.l.f., trying some of the newness and also some of their more iconic products, I might as well throw in one of these foundations. I ended up picking up two shades. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this foundation has been around for a minute. And I don't actually know if this is supposed to be a dupe for something. Oh, look at that pump on the bottle, that is so nice. I don't know if this is supposed to dupe the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation. That's kind of what the packaging is reminding me of. I could be completely making that up. So if somebody knows, will you please let me know? All right, I'm gonna kind of do a little patch test on this color. This one is the shade Pearl 120. I mean, I honestly feel like that's a pretty good match for me. I also bought the shade Beige. Beige is quite a bit darker. Honestly, I feel like the colors mixed would work for me. And since I've already pumped both of them on the back of my hand, I think I'm just gonna mix them. Oh, I got foundation on my sweatshirt. <laughs> no, I feel like that always happens to me. This has a fragrance. Hmm, I feel like most of their products don't have fragrance, at least anymore. I usually don't love that, but it doesn't smell bad. It smells fresh, so we'll see if it lingers. I've heard really good things about this foundation though. It says it has a medium coverage, and that's kind of all it says. <laughs> And there's just like directions on how to use it. I need to look at my receipt. How much was this? $6? This was $6. You're kidding. Honestly, I am picky with fragrance, but like if this looks good, I don't care if it has a fragrance for $6. And so far it's looking really good, especially as I'm pressing it into the skin with my sponge and kind of getting rid of any brush lines. It almost has like this balmy feel to it, which is allowing it to almost feel like a skincare product being pressed into the skin. Um, but I really do also like the amount of coverage that gave. That looks really nice, like really nice. Well, I feel like because of that corrector, I don't feel like I need tons of concealer, but I'm gonna wear it anyway. We're gonna go in with the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I'm gonna use the shade Light Ivory, and I don't feel like I need too much, so just a little here and here. Honestly, the foundation gave great coverage. I'm not gonna do any concealer on the rest of the face. I'm just gonna blend this out. I'm gonna do a little bronzing and contouring with the e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wands. I honestly just wanna hear from you guys. Like, what's your opinion on dupes in general? I know there can be a lot of mixed feelings about it. For me, when it comes to price, I really do appreciate high quality, affordable products. We all do. And I don't feel like you have to pay an arm and a leg to get a really nice makeup product, no matter what it is. I think I've almost just been feeling like the dupe products in the sense start to almost get more hype than the original more high-end products. And for me, like I almost feel like I have to try the dupe product just because it's supposed to be a dupe for something. Does that make sense? Like even if I'm not looking to buy a lip oil or a cream blush or whatever, I have like 50,000 cream blushes, but then e.l.f. just launched new cream blushes and I'm like, oh, I have to try it just because it's supposed to be a dupe for the rare beauty ones. But I already have all the rare beauty ones, you know? <laughs> so I almost understand it more if like you're somebody who's wanted to try the rare beauty blushes and then like you see the e.l.f. one and it's significantly more affordable. Like I understand that, but for me, it's like I have the original, but I still wanna try the dupe. <laughs> and it makes more sense to me that I try it and buy it because I like review stuff, like it's my job. So honestly, I convince myself and I, I genuinely enjoy telling you guys if a dupe is a dupe or not. Like it's one of my favorite types of videos to make. But I'm just wondering where you guys are at with dupes. Like, do you love the dupe more than the original? Do you buy the original and the dupe? Do you wait for the original product to be duped and only buy that? Or are you like not really swayed by all these trends like I am? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. I ran into Ulta and I saw that they did have one decent shade of the Camo Liquid Blush. This is the brand new blush line that's supposed to be a dupe for the Rare Beauty Viral Blush, which we all probably already have. Um, this is the shade Dusty Rosé. They were out of a lot of colors at my Ulta, so I just figured I would buy one. Part of me was like, oh, I'll buy several, but we're just doing one look, so I might as well just show you one color with one look. And as always, I went in for one e.l.f. product and came out with a lot more, partially because I walked in there, and this is off topic a little bit, but they had the most beautiful, massive Charlotte Tilbury display, you guys. Charlotte Tilbury is officially at Ulta. Isn't that nuts? I'm so excited about it. So here's what this looks like. The 
the wand is cute. It's a little bit more of like a rounded edge versus the Rare Beauty one. I will say that about e.l.f. They're not trying to dupe the packaging so much as much as they are like the vibe and the effect. That's why I feel like some of the formulas are not like copy paste formulas necessarily. And even the packaging might allude to the original product. For example, the Halo Glow Beauty wand, like it has that little sponge tip applicator, but the packaging is not exactly the same. Anyway, we're gonna try this out. I'm gonna pick this up on the back of my hand and apply it to the cheeks. I mean, this is blending out so beautifully. Basically, I've just noticed, especially with like this cream blush situation and similar packaging like this, everyone just seems to try to like dupe the original, but then we have like every brand launching the exact same product. And this isn't to say that we shouldn't be looking for or enjoying dupes. I love finding dupes for high-end products, but it just feels like at some point, is anyone gonna like go outside of the box and like innovate a little bit more? Are the brands that are gonna do that only gonna be like the Charlotte Tilbury's of the world that set the trends and then everyone just kind of follows later? And I get that there's trends, right? Like there's always trends that are gonna come and go. Everyone's into a certain vibe and even more so now than before with social media trends come in so fast and then I feel like they leave just as fast sometimes but to me it kind of feels like all the brands are doing the same type of thing all the time now as soon as one brand makes something go viral somebody dupes it somebody takes their spin on it and makes it their own which I think is just the name of the game in some ways but I'm just wondering if that's like gonna be the future of makeup or if the dupe culture is a trend itself. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. I wanna hear what you guys feel about this whole topic. I'm gonna to take a little bit of the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder, which actually, now that I think of it, I feel like this is one of the first dupe products. I don't know if they were intentionally trying to dupe the Charlotte Tilbury powder when they launched this or if it just happened to be that way, but this is kind of what like led them down that solid duping path, you know? This was one of those first products that reminded me a lot of that Charlotte Tilbury powder, which honestly, they don't even make it anymore. Isn't that wild? But kind of that more glowy powder. I'm just gonna dust that through the T-zone. I'm really liking how this makeup look is turning out. I feel like honestly, half of it is that foundation. It's looking really pretty. I'm excited to see how this wears on me. Hello, it's Allie from the future. I've got my husband <laughs> holding a nice little light. Um, this foundation, I just wanted to give you a little update. I've been wearing it for about five hours, so not like a full, full, day um but it's looking really nice it's obviously like dewy where i normally get dewy and i realized i didn't use my hood of powder where i normally do so it looks a little extra glowy That's she right. wants to hold the light you want to hold it you want to hold the light Okay, I'll let you hold it in a minute. So it looks a little extra dewy than usual. For $6, I'm honestly really impressed. I feel like you guys have been telling me to try this for a long time. I don't know what took me so long, but I'm really happy that I have it in my collection. The scent lingered for a little bit. I don't notice it now, but it smelled a lot like the Cody powder, which is a very um, distinct scent, but I realized that's totally what it reminded me of. Here's what it looks like five hours in. Okay. Okay, this is not an e.l.f. product. But I just want to take a little of a brown shadow. This is from the Nabla palette. And just create a little shape in the crease of my eye. And then also a little color on the eyelid too. Also going along that lower lash line. I'm actually going to brand hop again and use the CoverGirl Exhibitionist and Kelsey Ballerini collab. This is the shade 1 of her little like liquid eyeshadows that are so pretty. And then I'm gonna wear the e.l.f. Lash and Roll Mascara. It's been a minute since I've worn this. This is another dupe example. This was supposed to be a dupe for the Benefit Roller Lash. <laughs> so they weren't shy with this one with the name. And I can't remember how I feel about it, honestly. So I wanted to wear it again. I feel like that's a nice everyday kind of a mascara formula. It's not too voluminous, which is nice. Kind of gives a little bit of like a lift to the lashes too, which I like. Okay, I'm gonna use this Cream Guide lip liner from the e.l.f. and Jennifer Coolidge collection. Since I wasn't able to find the new e.l.f. lip liners, I figured I would just use this one. This color is so nice. I was gonna use an e.l.f. lipstick, but I like this color so much. I'm just gonna kind of fill in the lips with this. And then we get to try this. This was sent to me so long ago and I wanna try it so badly. I am definitely gravitating toward this shade called Honey Talks. And then also I'm vibing with this shade a little too. Rose Envy, that looks pretty. Heard a lot of good things about this color too, this nice like brown berry called Jam Session. For this look, do we do more brown or more pink? Hmm, I feel like my heart wants the brown, but with this look and the pink cheek, I think we gotta go with pink, especially with my outfit as well. So I'm gonna try this out in the shade Rose Envy. 
the applicator is just like Dior. That slight minty feel is very similar to Dior as well, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Okay, no, these are really nice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, that is really nice. <laughs> no wonder they've gone viral. It's kind of funny how like the dupes go viral initially because they're dupes. And then I feel like they stick around cause like they're actually a really good product, like a standalone product. I think e.l.f. does that really well. Yeah, I really like how this feels. And I've tried a lot of lip products. That is nice. <laughs> I kind of see what all the hype is about. I see why that was viral on its own, honestly. Oh, and I love that pink color, especially with like Valentine's Day coming up. I love a little bit more of like a pink look. I feel like I want to hint more blush. This is always what I do, I swear. I don't know where my blush brush went that I was using, so I'm gonna try this out with my fingertips. I really do like this kind of cushiony feel that this has. Oh, applying it with my fingertips is actually really, really nice. It kind of has that putty feel to it. I know it's part of like their putty line, but it kind of has that same feel that was in the under eye brightener, like a cushiony, finish, which is nice. You know, I always forget, and then I remind myself every time I use the e.l.f. Halo Glow setting powder that I can't put it around this area here where I have larger pores. It just emphasizes them, but I love it on all the other areas of my face. So just a reminder, if you've followed along, I always forget. So I'm gonna buff in a little bit of my Huda Beauty powder because I feel like that just really smooths everything out. I realized I pushed my brush into the back of my hand or maybe it was from the blush. I had put the liquid glittery eyeshadow on the back of my hand and I didn't clean off my hand well enough. Now I have glitter all through here, but that's okay. It looks mostly good. I'm gonna touch up the brows. I would normally use a setting spray, but I'm not going to today, partially because I kind of want to see how this foundation wears, but also I really like the glow. I didn't overpowder the sides of my face, so I'm just not going to worry about setting spray. I am going to set my brows. This is not e.l.f. This is the Anastasia brow gel that I've been loving. I've been loving this. I just really felt like wearing it today, so I'm going to use this to set my brows. I am really excited. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm so excited about this lip oil. This feels good on the lips. Like I see why this has gone viral outside of it being a supposable dupe for the Dior one. It's just everything about it is so lovely. Like I just wanna keep applying it. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Like e.l.f. is a fabulous brand. The quality that they bring at the price they bring, I feel like can't be beat. The only other brand I'm thinking of that really is up to par with that is Moira, but that's not as accessible I feel. I would love to see Moira come into retail stores, but that's a whole other topic. But I wanna know how you guys feel about dupe brands in general. Do you like this direction that e.l.f. has taken the entire brand? Do you feel like it will continue? Do you feel like it's really helpful? I just wanna hear from you guys. Like, do you love this? Do you feel like it's here to stay? Or do you feel like the dupe culture is a little bit of a trend as well? I wanna hear your thoughts. I love you all so much. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're enjoying this new setup. Let me know how you like the lighting. Um, We've gotten feedback on the camera that the quality is much better, which I agree with. So I adore you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for always being so supportive and so sweet when I post videos. Like you've made my dream life come true. So I love you so much and I hope you have an amazing day wherever you are and I'll see you in my next video. Love you.